Greece is seeing its highest number of new COVID cases since the pandemic began. To fight the surge, the government is reimposing some restrictions targeting the unvaccinated. There is positive news, though, too. The European Commission is almost doubling its growth forecast for Greece after unexpectedly strong tourism season this year. We're now joined by the Greek Finance Minister Christos Stikoris from Athens. Finance Minister, great to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us and for your time today. Let's talk about the good news and the upgraded growth forecast. What's driving that and what does that mean critically for jobs and employment? First of all, I would like to thank you, Julia, for the invitation. Indeed, we have very positive results and forecasts for the Greek economy, not only coming from the European Commission, but also from all foreigners and institutions. And this will be confirmed on Friday when we will submit the budget. It seems that we will have a strong and sustainable growth rate for the period 2021-2023. Unemployment has been reduced to 13% according to what was published today. Disposable income has been increased. What drives the growth rate? Mainly investments and extroversion, exports. According to the European Commission, we will have a significant increase of exports and investments by around 8% and 15% respectively uh, in 2022, when the Euro European average will be 5% and 0% respectively for 2022. I mean, this is this is all good news. The wild card, of course, for Greece, but for many other nations, and we discuss this on a daily basis, is, is rising COVID cases. And I mentioned some of the restrictions that the government's already having to put into place. How restrictive and how concerned are you for small businesses that have already spent many months over the past year and a half um, in challenging conditions? Are there more measures that you can take perhaps to help them? We have taken a lot of measures, I know. More, than 43, <laughs> more than 33 billion euros in the last couple of years in order to create a safety net uh, above households and enterprises. And we succeeded according to what I presented uh, before and I shared with you. Indeed, we have a couple of crises at the moment to face, a challenges. One challenge has to do with the health crisis, but take into account the new measures that we have imposed. It seems that we have a significant increase in the vaccination rate in the last couple of weeks, either with the first dose or with the third dose. And the second challenge we have to face has to do with inflation. We have lower inflation rates compared with the European average, but it, still, it, it is still very high. So we take one of measures and permanent measures in order to enhance even more disposable income and to avoid creating turbulences in the real economy. I mean, small businesses are saying, look, um can you please help us more with perhaps tax breaks, with rent control? If you have to impose further restrictions from here, will you at least contemplate perhaps looking at additional one-off measures? As you said, there's many issues that you're dealing with here, inflation, uh, COVID, rising energy prices, all sorts of things. Will you contemplate more measures if they're needed? It depends on the fiscal space we'll have. Right. But irrespectively of how they work and how they provide uh, the real economy has been helped a lot uh, previously. Even in the last three months, we continue to help the private sector. And we will continue to do, do that by one of measures, if it is needed. But at the same time, as I said with you before, we have to take one of measures in order to tackle the energy crisis. And in this case, you can see that in the last couple of weeks, we had some state subsidies for all low voltage consumers. We have a refund of the special consumption tax for the agricultural sector. We have the heating allowance, which has been enhanced. So we try simultaneously to tackle all these prices by taking into account the cash reserves we have, but at the same time, fiscal considerations. You've also said to the EU that there should be a fund to help not just Greece, but all other countries. And this is something that, that Greece itself has been pushing, a fund to help people manage the higher energy costs. What has the feedback been from Europe? We're discussing it collectively at the European level. 
uh, with the ministers of energy uh, indeed we had a joint statement with the minister of finance from france from uh, spain from uh, uh, if i remember well from uh, czech republic and from romania in order to ask for collective actions either by creating a common approach at the european level either by having an intuition of what is going on in the gas market, uh, either regarding the wholesale electricity market, and at the same time, achieving an energy independence by investing in the diversification of our energy supply. We are discussing this issue collectively with other ministers, not only finance ministers, but also ministers of the energy sector. I think one of the other challenges that Greece understands well is the economic cost, the, the human cost of the migrant crisis. And Greece has been on the front lines for many years and I think understands this best. Can I ask what you make of the situation right now with the migrant crisis on the Polish-Belarus border and whether you think the EU can do more to help, whether Greece can afford financially perhaps to do more to help? Greece's borders, you know very well, are also the European Union Eastern borders. Due to the geopolitical position and geopolitical tensions, Greece is familiar with dealing with this sensitive crisis and sensitive issue. We have reinforced our actions along with our European counterparts to tackle the migration crisis in the most human and constructive way, always following the path of the European and international law and we will continue to do that. This case, the immigration case, is also something that we have raised regarding the fiscal rules that we started to discuss at the European level. In order to exclude this cost from the expansion we are going to, to face in the following years regarding the fiscal, the fiscal rules, the targets and the requirements needed and agreed in the future. Yeah, and this is such a crucial point. We're coming off the back of COP26. I know your debt levels, your deficit levels coming out of COVID, never mind the financial crisis. If you want to be able to invest in renewable technologies, in infrastructure of the future, there needs to be more fiscal room to allow for spending, whether it's this or anything else. That, I know, is another part of the discussions that you're having in the EU. Do you think it's possible to get debt relief in order to be able to make productive spending? on essentials like this to future-proof your economy? Uh, we raise two issues. If we will have the fiscal space and if we will have the money in order to mm. invest in resources. Uh, indeed, uh, one week ago, we started discussing the fiscal rules at the European level, at the Eurogroup and the COFIN level. It was a very productive, fruitful discussion and our position is that w the new rules should take into account the experience we have from the recent crisis, but also from the European uh, debt crisis. Mm. The new European fin fiscal rules should be common and credible, should be appropriate and effective, should be simple and functional, should be up to date and dynamic. In order to find the resources and invest in order to to achieve the climate uh, change, uh, we have two sources. We have, first of all, the National Recovery and Resilience Plan, where 38% of the whole envelope is targeted towards the climate. And at the same time, we are going to issue a new bond, a green bond, in the second semester of 2022, and at the moment, we are planning to build a solid portfolio of eligible projects to be financed through a sustainable or a green bond. These are the two sources, the two main sources, in order to find money and invest on the green transition. And at the same time, we expect that going forward in 2022, through the discussions for the fiscal rules, we will manage to, to exclude these investments in the European priorities from the expenses that will be calculated in the fiscal rules. Do you think the Germans will agree? We will discuss it. <laughs> Work in progress.
<laughs> we, yes. we just talked. We just talked. No, we, there's we, time. We have a gift ahead. <laughs> yeah. in order to this so great to chat to you. Come back and talk to us about this because we need all funds to invest in green bonds. And this will uh, start some kind of revolution, financial revolution, to, to achieve this. The Greek finance minister there, Christos Dikros, great to have you on the show, sir. Thank you.